Okay, Be'ezat Hashem, Na'ase, V'Natzliach. I want to welcome you back to Tefillah 101, the class that we do here at David Chai, Baruch Hashem. Uh, we are up to our ninth class. Uh, tonight's class is called Preparations for Tefillah. This will be the last insol- installment for the introduction of Tefillah, even though that I still want to do classes for Kaddish. Uh, for being a shaliach tzibur, for the hazara, for uh, talking in shul. These are all very, very important, but I feel that at the moment we need to weiter, we need to go forward and learn Damida already, because we did a proper uh, pr- preparation for it, but we will do Bezat Hashem Blinader at the end of Damida. We will do these few, few classes, or possibly <coughs> even uh, one or two more subjects as they come up. Um, before we get started, so this is very exciting because this is going to be the final class of all the introduction that we prepared ourselves and next week mamash we're going to do Lismoch Geulah Lechuva and then start all the classes of Baruch HaTashem, a full class on just Baruch HaTashem, the whole understanding of those three words and then the first Bercha, the second, the third, we're also going to learn the construction of the Bercha, who are the authors of Da Amida, what's the different sections that are there. All that is very, very exciting. Good classes coming up, Baruch Hashem. Before we get started, I'd like to do some honorable mentions and dedications. Yishtabach Shemur Shal Kadosh Baruch Hu Be'ezat Hashem that the following Divrei Torah, the following class, will be to the Ilui Nishmat of Yonatan Ben Alis. Also, for the Ilui Nishmat of Breindal Bat Kransha and Shalom Dov Ber Ben Binyamin Eliyahu. Also, this should be to the Ilu Nishmat of Ninet Hana Bat Masuda, Natan Ben Salma, David Ben Zohara, Yaniv Ben Rina, Michel Ben Zohara, Aviv Ben Vivi. And for Efua Shalema, Miriam Rafael Golda, Lavi Rafael Ben Olga, Chaya Tova Gittel Bat Rachel Ruchama, Amram Ben Zohara, Shiran Bat Ninet Chana, Georget Bat Chaviva, and Yafa Bat Mazal, but an extra, extra, extra Seat de Shmaya for Shiran Bat Ninet Chana, Bezat Hashem, Te Orget, Refua Shelema, Berut Eitana, and Bezat Hashem, Besot Ovot Bekarov, and also for the general success. Of Bracha Vatzlacha, Lezivu, Priya Verivia, Bezat Hashem Shiniske, Lirot, Banim, Vebanot, Ekshirim, Lavodat Hashem, Barach, Le Batchen, Bat Jacqueline, and for the following sponsors Alejandra Hernandez, Nisim Buzaglo, Henshi Gordetsky, Batchen, Bat Jacqueline, Baruch Hashem, and Asher Al Fasi. Baruch okay. Hashem, we see a lot of people getting involved. A lot of people want the store to go up to the Shamayim and to tag to it some schuyot for their loved ones. Okay, let's get started. So let's do a few refreshers about what we covered. You know, we just came back as our first class back from Pesach. So let's refresh our memory, take out some of the cobwebs <laughs> to the introduction that we've been doing. For the pa- for the uh, for the past few weeks, and then we'll start on today's class, which is preparations for tefillah. And then once we go there, final installment, and next week we're starting the Amidah Be'ezat Hashem Blinader. So if you remember, the first class is why do we pray? We asked ourselves why do we pray? What's the what's the whole inyan of praying? And we said it's mitzvah to say Torah that it says that you have to work, to you have to serve Hashem bechol levavicha. Ezo avodah shebalev. What is the work of the heart? Zoe Tefila, the rabbis told us, how do, you, how do you serve Hashem in your heart? You pray. And why do we pray? On a, on a much higher level? Because we want to speak to Hashem. We want to develop a close personal talking relationship with God. To connect, to bond to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Not to just come in and completely miss out on the purpose of developing a close talking relationship with Hashem. We also learned about the importance of praying in shul, praying in a minyan, Praying in a set place, as well as having the 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 the, the, the importance of having intention, kavana. 
that you understand the words that are coming out of your mouth, you understand uh, uh, how to uh, use the, the Sidur properly, and to have the Kavanah and Tefillah and all that that entails, which was a beautiful class to begin with. I, I really uh, like the, uh, we did a three part on that Kavanah series. More than welcome to go back and watch it again to catch up. We also took some time to understand the body movements. Why we move the way that we move during prayer. Why do we move to the left? Why do we move to the right? What's the correct way to move? How do we step in and out of the Amidah? How to bow? Which side to turn? Etc. Etc. And now we are at the final stage of preparing for Tefillah. And before we can begin to learn the Amidah, which is a very important lesson, we need to learn a few Chazals to strengthen our previous learning, to crystallize why it's so important to prepare for tefillah. Meaning, you know, the tefillah, you, you, you need to get, give it good marketing. You have to promote it. A lot of people have a wrong approach to tefillah. You know, Baruch Hashem, that they are able to fight the Yetzirah, to even what? Get up, get out of bed, in the morning, put on tefillin, make a tefillah, read a hundred pages, come back in the afternoon, Baruch Hashem for that. But if you're already doing that, already doing that, why don't you unlock the powers that's there? Unlock the power of tefillah. People that have discovered the power of tefillah, they don't miss. They don't miss a shakhri, they don't miss a mincha, they don't miss an arvid. And the ones that really know the power of minyan and, and, and praying in a shul, they, they will never miss a tefillah outside of these four walls. So I, before, I wanted, before we start today's lesson, I wanted to give a bigger chizuk. Why here? Why, why are we learning about tefillah? What's a big deal about tefillah? Well, let's start. Why do we? Why is tefillah so important? I'm gonna. <coughs> uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the of the Hagdama that the, the Rav did in Yalkut Yosef to Ilchot Tefillah. I've been quoting from it the entire time. I'm gonna continue. He brings there in the. In the in the Hagdama, in the introduction, that the tefillah has the power to nullify or change decrees, and also to give you a chizuk in Yad Shemaim. It says, "Kochashel tefillah hanemered bekavana leshanot akzerot." The power of tefillah that said with intention, it can change decrees. Think about it. A person might have in the Shemaim a bad decree, something negative, something bad. Chaz v'shanot. And it's in the Shemaim, and nobody wants that, nobody wants problems in their lives, nobody wants a decree in their life, right? A gzera on them. What can change that? Tefillah. Shal yedah tefillah adam mishtaneh, hu mitkarev lakadosh baruchu, because what happens, the minute you check yourself into a tefillah, you're talking to God, you're talking to Hashem, you're getting closer to Hashem, you're changing. <laughs> the tefillah changes you. The conversation with Hashem changes you. I always try to give an example, when you talk to somebody, when you connect with him, what happens when you walk away? I like him. Yeah, well, you know, now I like him. You know, before I didn't know him so well. Before he was a stranger. Now, after talking to him this time, I like him. There's something, there's something there. I connected with him. Similarly with Hashem. Keep talking, keep talking. What's going to happen? You're going to have a connection. You're going to get bond. You're going to have a bond. Something's going to, something's going to change. You can't show up every day to tefillah, talk to Hashem, and nothing changes. It doesn't work like that. The only time it doesn't change is if you come to tefillah, and you're not talking to Hashem. You just reading the text. Might as well read a newspaper, right? It's the same thing. You're reading a newspaper, whatever it is. You're reading the, the Sidur, whatever it is. But if you use the Tefillah, the Sidur, as a tool to connect to Hashem, it's a completely different experience. Completely different experience. He says, when a person, oh, welcome, what a, what a schut, please make yourself a plate and join us. When the person starts to pray, he becomes mit kadesh, he becomes holier, mit ale, he gets elevated, and he, he starts to feel the security of every good relationship with Kadosh Baruch Hu. And what happens? A person's luck changes through prayer. Good luck, I'm sorry, bad luck turns into good luck. Kilo al Adam Kazen Why? Because that gzera is on the old you. Now that you did what? Now that you spoke to Hashem, you now that you connected to Hashem, you now you did the teshuvah, now that you did something change in the tefillah, the, the deen comes in the shamayim and says, there's a deen over here, I'm going down to, for this deen to come to happen. 
They go, they go, they go, they go, they go. They say, we, we can't find the address to this, to this Gzera. It's supposed to be for Ploni Ben Ploni. We come to Ploni Ben Ploni, he's a tzaddik, he's not a chote. He says, yeah, he, in Mincha, he spoke to Hashem. In Mincha, he did Teshuva. In Mincha, he shtana lo amazal. In Mincha, he got closer to Kadosh Baruch Hu. And then what happened? The, the Deen is not for him. He, had an, he changed his identity. Now he's a different person. Because he changed the different person, the Gzera is for his old self on that level. Now that he went up a different level, there's no Gzera for that individual. He changed, his, he changed his luck. Midrash Tan Chuma brings something very interesting. He says, Midrash Tan Chuma in Prashat Vaishalach, it says, don't think that Hashem is looking to punish people. That's not what Hashem created the world, so you can have people and punish them if they did something wrong. Don't think Hashem is like, you know, like sometimes we have an image, maybe from a cartoon or a movie that you saw, <laughs> long beard, angry God with the finger God, oh, you did something wrong, and <laughs> lightning bolt on top of the person. <laughs> it's not that. <clears throat> he says, you know what he asked for? He did something wrong, Pray. Do teshuva, get out of it. I'll accept your, your apology. There he is. I asked about you. Achshav en lanu lo navi, velo kohen, velo mikdash, velo mizbeach, velo korpan. He says, it says in the, in the Agada that nowadays we don't have a prophet. We don't have a kohen. We don't have a mikdash. We don't have an altar. We don't have the korbanot. Who's going to atone for us? Back in the days, we had assistants. We had people that helped us out. We had bet mikdash that helped us out. We had korbanot that got us out of trouble. What about today? You know what we have today? You know what's our power tool? Prayer. Tefillah. Lefichach amar Daniel. Adonai Shema, Adonai Selacha. He says, that's why the Prophet Daniel left us a pasuk to say, when Hashem hears, Hashem forgives. But what do you have to do? You have to talk. You have to pray. No prayer. <laughs> that deed from the Shemaim, is, it has an address. But if you don't pray, you change your identity and you get closer, the deed can't find you. It's, a, it's, a, it's Nisim 2.0. It's a new version. Right? It's Yonatan 3.0. It's a new version. That old you deserves the punishment. The new you, you're a tzaddik. You did the shuvah. A tefillah changes your identity, changes your luck, brings you closer to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Continues to say, Psikta Drav Kahana. We know the famous thing. We said it here in this class many times. Unshalema Farim Sefatenu. That now that we don't have the animal sacrifices, we replaced it with animal service with the lip service if you guys are cold you're more than welcome to uh, turn that off if you need to he says who pays for these cows they used to be the, the they were instead of our sins sefatenu but filashan kufalim fanecha he said you have to understand sometimes we learn the Torah we look at Beta Mikdash, we look at the Mikdash, we look at the Kohanim, the Kohen Gadol, the Avodah, oh my God, oh, those were the days. What do I have? Your lips. Your lips are just as strong. Your words are just as powerful. The tefillah has, it has the same uh, power. We, we had a substitution between Unshalim Farim instead of the animal sacrifice, Sefaten, our lips. The power of speech, the power of words, the power of your tefillah. Don't discount it. Don't let anybody convince you that you don't have power in your tefillah. Chazal put so much things out there to, to, to almost like pump us up, to let us know, guys, activate your power. You have a power. This generation, the ikvita de Mashiach, your power is tefillah. Furthermore, a kurban is, is also there's a, there's a, a distinction between the animal sacrifice and our tefillah. What's better? The animal sacrifice in Bet HaMikdash or Tefillah? Tefillah. 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 Okay. Because it's Tefillah one on one, I'll accept that answer. <laughs> okay? But it says, A korban, chutz lezmano, pasul. If you're supposed to bring a morning sacrifice, you know, like the korban tamid shel aboker, and this korban tamid shel ben arbaim, right? If you bring it too late or too early, pasul. 
That's it. You can't do it. You, 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 it, it came at the wrong time. Furthermore, let's see what he says. He continues to say, also. You know that a person's thought would nullify the Qurban. If you're bringing a Shalamim, oh, here's the Qurban, I want Shalamim. Oh, I meant Khatat. Oh, you had the wrong thought on the, on the, on the animal? Pasul. Even the wrong machshava on the on the animal, it becomes pasul. He says, because we replaced the animal sacrifices with tefillah, don't think that the rules of the animal sacrifices don't apply to your tefillah. Meaning, betfilah tzichal yot bezmana u bekavana shlema. Your tefillah also needs to be on time, and your and your tefillah also has to have kavana. No kavana psula. Why don't we do nets? Huh? We should do nets here. Why is it Hashem? We're, 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 we're working on it. We're working on it. Vaikar Hualev. I do it at Nar Shalom. Well, like, when I stay at my father-in-law's. Because <laughs> I hear him walking down the stairs. Vaikar Hualev, Kedichti Vul Avdo Bechol Lev He says, but the most important thing, lady and gentlemen, the most important thing, Rachmana Libabai. Hashem wants the heart. Meaning what? Don't be fake. Come in and connect. Come in and pray. Come in and talk to God. live. The most important thing in your prayer is what's what's in your heart. In Masechet Brachot, on the thirty-second page on the second side, the blue, Gedolat Tefila Yoter Min Korbanot. He says that Tefila actually is on a higher level than Korbanot. Masechet Brachot, this Gemara. We're not uh, trying to. Make promotion to this class. <laughs> this is the Gemara says it itself. And how could that be? Ashla Kadosh said something inc- uh, incredible in his Sidur Shara Shamayim. He says, Malat Tfilah Yoter Meulam Shubachat Makurban. Look at these. Are, this is a very holy rabbi saying these things. He says that the the, the level of the Tefillah is on a much higher level and much higher quality than an animal cr- sacrifice. He says why? He said Tefillah. Includes when a person prays, he can pray to atone for all types of sins that he committed. He says he can even pray and make atonement for sins that there's no korbanot to atone for them. You have to understand that there's some korbanot that are available to us to atone for sins. Some sins you can't go to Beta Migdash, it's like game over, it's karet, it's a skila. It's a chenek, whatever the Arba Mitot Bedin they were at that time. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, if somebody has a, 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 a sin of Arba Mitot Bedin, he doesn't die, he can do what? He can make make a toy, he can make Teshuvah on it. In the time of Beit HaMikdash, there's no death. So it says, V'afilu b'shayim she'elam kapar b'korban, mitkaprim and batfilah. V'yesh atfilah ma'ala ala korban. And something else in addition to the tefilah that is above and beyond the korban, he said the Qurban has a set time, Zman Mugbal. Vatfila, he bechol et u bechol zman. He said the Tefila is all the time. The power, the, uh, the tool, the accessory, the spiritual accessory called Tefila is available all day, every day. Meaning that in, in Beta Migdash, what did you have in Beta Migdash? You had certain times, certain days, nothing at night. Tefila, it's an all day. Uh, approach. So we know that the Shlach Kadosh is just saying that the Tefillah is higher than Korbanot, more and more effective nowadays, because on a practical level, for a modern day Jew, you can atone for all your sins at any given time. Pirkei uh, Avot. You could say I'm Udal whenever. Correct. Yeah, it's good for Shachrit. Pirkei Avot. No. Well, that's the whole thing. You you have you have shachrit, mincha, and that's Avi. the same amida for all three. Right. right. Not only that, if it's you like missed Shabbat. one, if you missed one because of the times, right. there is still an, ab- an, ab- an ability to uh, make up for it, which is not so common with korbanot. Some are possible, some mm-hmm. are not. But above and beyond that, there's another thing, is that you can have a personal tefillah. So you can talk to Hashem all the time. Hebrew. And I'll bring you the Pasuk for it as well. But before we go there, I just wanted to bring up Pirkei Avot because right now we're in the time between Pesach and Shavuot and it's a good minhag to learn Pirkei Avot. So I wanted to include this Pirkei Avot. It's actually on the first Perek. It's the second Mishnah. It says, 
on three things the world stands. Al Torah, Val Avodah, Val Gemilut Chasadim. The world has three pillars, three legs that it stands on. What's one of them? Torah. The second one is Avodah. The third one is Gemilut Chasadim. Gemilut Chasadim is acts of kindness. Torah, what we're doing right now, we're learning Torah. What's Avodah? Avodah is me going to work that holds prayer. up the world. Avodah, huh? what do we say? Avodah. Our prayer holds up the world. <laughs> Our Torah learning holds up the world. Our acts of kindness holds up the world. Do you understand how important tefillah is? It's holding up the world. There's a story I heard many years ago from Rabbi Mansell. I remember he said, uh, he was telling a story of a kid. He was in yeshiva, and he woke up in the middle of the night. It was like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, and he couldn't go back to sleep. Oh, Hashem, this kid was a tzaddik, and uh, it took, uh, he saw whatever was next to him, and he started to read either Gemara or Mishnah, whatever it is, until he fell asleep again, and went back to sleep. The following day, he came back to, he comes down to Minyan to pray. The Rosh Yeshiva stands up for him. Stands up for him. Everybody was in shock. What's so special about this kid? Stands up for him. After tefillah, he tells him to come closer. He tells him, what did you do last night? He's like, I went to sleep, but in the middle of the night, I sort of like, you know, I, I woke up. Uh, I read a little bit of uh, Gemara, I read Mishnah, and went back to sleep. He says, you know, that the whole world stands on Torah learning. He says, last night, you were, the whole world was on you. At the time that you were learning, nobody else was learning. Wow. You were the only one in the world that was learning <laughs> at that particular moment. And if you weren't up, and if you didn't study, the whole world would go back to Tovavo. Wow. <laughs> he says that's why he stood up for him. So Pikavot lets us know that. So, for something so important and so powerful, for what we're just discussing right now, that you could change your luck, nullify his decrees, it's a high level in the Qurban. It atones for sins that even Qurban oh, don't uh, atone for. The whole world stands on it. You have to prepare for this. This is not something... It's not... You, you know, it, because we do it every day, what happens? What's gazba? Okay, it's something that I do every day. You lose the importance. You know, the, the you ever see a bar mitzvah boy put on tefillin for the first time? The tefillin is shiny. Wow, That's he Ken. takes it out slowly. That's the strap, he, not only that, if the strap touches the floor, oh my God, he picks it up, takes him about 10 Kisses minutes it. to fall, <laughs> the tzitzit, the every, until, you know, perfect, the corners, this, that, right? That's day one. You go to the guy next, next to him on day 15,644, you see the guy just shoving everything inside, he's folding it with the, with the strap on the floor. What happened? The, the frisbee. The talit is cleaning the, 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 the looks like a, uh, oh, yeah. has the color of a baguette already. He, does the, <laughs> the, the, the he, he, does it, he, he cleans it once a decade. What happens? You become, uh, you're used to it. So what we're trying to do over here is say, don't get used to it. Mm -hmm. Understand this is something very powerful. You know what's tomorrow? Tomorrow morning, 7.45 in the shul? You know what it is? Six ten. Showtime. Prime time. Gonna be normal office. What an event! What a main event! What a main event is happening tomorrow. We get to speak to the King of all kings. I can change my luck. I can change decrees. I can change my identity. I can. I, I can. I help the world. I can pray for somebody else. My words have power. I'm gonna use the power that's left to me. We said, "What's the power that we inherited from our forefathers? The power of tefillah." Imagine if tomorrow you had a meeting with a dignitary, with a minister, with a president, with a king, no, with an Adam Chashuv. Imagine the Rishon Etzion, right? The, 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 the chief rabbi of Israel comes tomorrow. What would you do? You would prepare accordingly, huh? Tonight? Wow, yeah, yeah, which yeah. suit? <laughs> let me shave, let me shower, uh, let, let, let me practice in the mirror. This, Hello, Prime Minister. Hello, Kvodera. You practice in the mirror. What you're going to say? What's the questions you're going to ask? Everything's going to be perfect. Moment. Oh, the meeting is at 7.45. You walk in. How prim, how proper, how connected, how focused you are. 
if that's for the president, for the king, for the minister, for Rishon Etzion, Kar Vachomer, Melech Malchei Amlachim. Kar Vachomer to the creator of the world, the king of all kings. How should our approach be, if that's how we act with humans, than to the creator? Again, you know, we have to dust off this thing that we get used to it and make it fresh again. Yep. Gotta come prepared. I think just lower the fence. And, and by the way, imagine HaKadosh Baruch Hu offers us this opportunity, the meet the present, uh, president opportunity, the, you know, the meet the, meet the Rishon Letzion opportunity, the meeting the King of All Kings opportunity, three times a day. Three times a day we have this opportunity to do that. And not only that, how do we meet the king? We meet the king as one of his uh, 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 citizens, as one of his uh, uh, employees. We come and we meet the king of all kings as Abba. Could you imagine? He rules the entire world and he's your Abba. That's, that's, the, that's the problem. That's why we dress. What? Well, listen. We say what? <laughs> listen. What do we say? Beni <laughs> bechor. The pasuk says, Beni bechor Israel. My son, my firstborn Israel. That's my son. And then we said, it, uh, there's another pasuk that says over there, Bechol amakom asher askir shemi avo elecha v'lechticha. Wherever you're gonna mention my name, I will come and I will bless you. That means you can literally, literally tomorrow, 11:30 in the morning, take your car to. T.Y. Park, walk around a couple of miles to clear your head, think about what questions you want to have, sit on a bench and do what you want to do, talk to your father. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have that availability, could you imagine? That's the advantages of being a Jew that's connected. You can speak to God. You can have conversations with Hashem. Furthermore, if this is the, if this is the conversation you want to have, how do you prepare for prayer? How do you prepare? Okay, so we, we just built up this whole thing of tefillah. It's the highest thing in the world. It's the VIP of all VIP. It's the best experience a person can have in this world if they really understand what it is. So how do I prepare for it? Drink a cold glass of water in the morning. That really That's works. a good... Uh, you said that. That really works. <laughs> so, how, so how to prepare for prayer? Huh? What should I do before I speak to the King of all kings? Uh-huh. What should I do before I speak to the Creator of the world? To Abba Sheba Shemaim. So... Tonight's class is starting now. <laughs> the Rosh Hashiva of Manchester, his name is Rabbi Yudan Zev Sigo, says, Sarich lachin et atzmo le tefila velachshov. A person needs to prepare himself for, tel- for tefila and to think, Ani holech laasot kaet davar gadol. Meaning, you wake up in the morning, tell yourself what you're about to do. I'm about to do a very, very big thing. I'm about to go speak to the king of all kings, to the master of the universe. Don't think it's a small thing when we say, It's not a small thing. It's a big deal to prepare for tefillah. Continues to say, in Masechet Brachot, on the 30th page, on the second side, Hasidim Arishonim, Hayu Shohin Sha'a Achat Umitpalelim. That the, back in the days, the, the Hasidim, before they pray, they would sit an hour before Tefillah. Why? To prepare themselves. It's just like, imagine again, that, that big meeting for, with the king, with the dignitary, with the Rishon Etzion, before you sit over there, say, hey, guys, Hold all my calls. Guys, no more text messages. Please, nobody, I, I need to concentrate for the next hour. I have to think what I'm gonna say when I go into this meeting. Similarly is the Hasidim. They used to take one hour before they step into the filah. It's, it's not a small thing. As it says in Masechet Berchot, en omdim litpalel ala mitoch, ela mitoch kovid rosh. It says you have to have, uh, you have to have a, a serious mm-hmm. mindset. They would wait an actual hour before they pray. The Rambam in El Chotefila says, Okay, uh, you know what? I need help. Rambam says, What is Kavana? Can you explain to me what is Kavana? 
היא answers, שיפנה ליבו מכל המחשבות, ויראה עצמו כאילו הוא עומד לפני השכינה. He says, you know how you prepare yourself? How you prepare for תפילה? He says, clear your mind. Clear your mind. And you have to imagine that the שכינה is standing in front of you. לפיכך צריך לשב מעט קודם התפילה, כדי לכוון את ליבו ואחר כך להתפלל. He says, that's why a person has to, you know, Uh, set himself up properly for tefillah. You come sit down, sit down, okay. Let me have a mindset. What am I doing here? I'm about to pray. Who am I praying to? What am I praying about? Who am I praying for? What, do I, what, what is it, what am, what's happening in the next half hour, 45 minutes? It's a lot different. It's a lot different than when somebody just, you know, opens the door to tefillin, boom, hodu. Hodu v'at kush. Hi, you, you, do you even know what you're doing? You have, to, you, you, you have to give those few minutes of intention. A few minutes of intention, like level set. You'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of people before they, uh, they go into sports, into a big game, or even a lot of people before they go to another thing, they, they, they have. They have like these bullet points that they say, what I'm doing, stay focused, this I'm going to do, I, I got, my, mind, uh, I got uh, my mind set on a certain goal. That's the type of mindset you have to go when you're going to tefillah. What am I doing over here? And Der Chagam, the Rambam says, what I told you right now, Shifane libo mikol ha-machshavot, v'irei atzmo k'ilu omed ifnei ha-shechina, l'shev me'at kodem ha-tfila, k'de l'kaven et libo, you know what he says? Eino divrei musar, I'm not giving you musar, I'm not giving you divrei musar, or mila de chasiduta, or some sort of like, words to be a chasid, ela halacha, it's a halacha to clear your mind before you pray, you can't just walk into it. Over here, the rabbi added a little bit more. He says, <coughs> We all do. Why do we come late to, to Shachrit? Carpool, children, it's very hectic. There's no question. When the kids are young, it's very, very hectic time in the household. Uh, practically, till after high school, you can still pull that uh, excuse. At one point, you have to either figure out a, a formula that works in your home so you can find this time to pray. Because praying is the, is the job of a man. This is how you, this is how you set up your day. This is how you set up the, your life. This is how you set up your family. How you set up your business. You need that tefillah for all the shefa to come from the shamayim. For in the ruchaniyut and the gashmiyut. So what do you do? You have to set it up. And if not, then you know, then the, you, know you, you get into the situation. Shemachir abet haknesat b'shachid. V'chotef et ha-talit. V'atfilin. U'npalel b'ritzav v'chipazon. And you see that the guy just is grabbing the talit and the, and, the, and the tefillin and he starts to do everything hurriedly just to catch up to be on it because he's late. Or somebody who just like is eating up the words just so he can play, he can pray in the minyan. You're not going to be able to do kavana. You're rushed. ונמצא שתפילתו לא תהא כהוגן. ומי שנוהג כך, הוא מתעלם מדברי חכמים. Meaning, if this is you every single day, if every single day you're coming late, if every single day you're saying, oh, my wife, my child, this, that, you know, if you're using that excuse, you're avoiding paying attention to דברי חכמים. That this whole preparation, ההכנה, this... This, this calming down, this, this, this focusing moment before starting tefillah is a halakha and you're robbing yourself of that experience. שכבר גילו לנו חזר כי הדרך הנכונה היא רק באמצעות שהייה והתבוננות שעה אחת קודם התפילה. He says that you have to give yourself an hour before tefillah. Now I know we don't have an hour before tefillah. I get it. Some people do, some people don't. We're going to go to that secondary level. But always want to start at the top. What's the creme de la creme service? Before coming to tefillah, give yourself an hour to collect your thoughts, to, 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 to get to the right mindset before tefillah. I'm going to show you something very interesting though. How did we get? How did we get to come late to tefillah? So a good tip is if you want to make, if you want to be successful in the morning, you know what you do? You plan at night. What's preparation for tefillah? 
Preparation for tefillah is getting a good night's sleep. If you're going to sleep at 1.30, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning because you're on Netflix, Facebook, or with that, who's going to get hurt? Your tefillah. The only thing that's going to get hurt from you sleeping late at night is your tefillah. Guaranteed baduk. We all know this. You wake up in the, as soon as you come in late to tefillah, what's the, the generic excuse? Okay, I felt bad for you if maybe you had a baby in the house or maybe you had like a pipe that burst or maybe you got some sort of a phone call that you need to do it. But what did you do last night that you didn't get any sleep? Bitul Torah. What did you do? YouTube, Netflix, uh, phone. What happens? Now your tefillah is half. Instead of getting it from Korbanot all the way to Halel Shabbat, the guy comes in at Hodu. Or he comes even a little bit later than Hodu, he comes in Haleluka. And then of course, and of course, as soon as the tefillah is over, I mean, a rush, in my rush, we have to go, have to go to work. Uh, what, 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 what came out of your tefillah? You've reduced it to, to, to practically nothing. Now, what you have to do about last night is, you have to also, just like we said before tefillah, sit down and think about things. The night before, sit down and think about things. Say, how is it going to be tomorrow? Tomorrow I have to take care of the kids before going to school. Okay, what time they go to school? 7.30. So you're waking up at 7 and giving yourself 30 minutes to do it? Or you're waking up 6.30 and giving yourself an hour to do it? Why? Because when you wake up late, then you have to go from 7.30 to 7.40. 7.40, 7.40. 7.45, you're home. What happens? Tefillah starts. You're already behind. So what is it? Start to play. I have carpool. I don't have carpool. I have, I have responsibilities. I have to help. I don't have to help. Think last night about what tomorrow is going to look like in the morning. Also, there's a big difference when you wake up in the morning and you're fresh versus feeling, feeling tired. When you're fresh, you have the energy for tefillah. When you're tired, what is it? You zone out. Again, who got hurt? Your tefillah. Why? Because of you. This whole mega event that we have, which is the tefillah, three times a day that we want to get connected to, you're jeopardizing it. Why? Because you're ruining tomorrow's tefillah tonight. The night before you're ruining the next day's tefillah. Taking care of the night before has a huge impact on the next day. And that, on that VIP meeting with God that you have at Nets or at 7.45. So the night before, think about, what time am I waking up? What time am I planning on being in shul? Is it going to be on time? Which is okay. Being here at 7.45 is okay. Okay? Because that's quote-unquote on time. But what does being here at 7.45 give you? You didn't do any hachana. You didn't prepare yourself. You didn't, you didn't sit down. You didn't have a, a moment to collect your thoughts before starting prayer. You're here on time, but you're still just jumping straight into tefillah. So let's not say we have an hour. We don't have an hour. Can we have 10, 15 minutes? Can you put in your mind that tefillah is not 7.45, but it's 7.30? What happens at 7.30? Tefillin ben yichuta. Calmly. With the yichud. I finish 7.35. I have 10 minutes. Oh, what do I do? Wait, hold on. I want to think about how I'm going to tefillah. Who am I praying for? What, what, what I need for... Who, the person that I'm praying for, what I need today, how I'm, say, how I'm thanking Hashem, what am I saying thank you for? Why is this good? Because you are now have intention. You don't have intention? Open up the Sidurim. I don't know if you guys ever pay attention to the way Harab Israel Abergel Shlita authored this book. This whole concept of having an hour before, and as Masachet Bechot says, an hour after, that's all in here. If you start from Birkot HaShachar, all the way to the beginning of Shachrit, the rabbi put in here, unbelievable hakdamot. Unbelie meaning, if you don't know how to think, what to think, what to say, but you know the importance of preparing for tefillah, you open this up, sukim that are, uh, that are, have, sukim uh, shiratsuil uh, ovam good pesukim to say every day. You have the tefillah of the lamnatseach in here. Then it has moda'a v'giluya da'at. After that, it has Tikkun HaNefesh. After Tikkun HaNefesh, it has uh, Tfilah Shla Kadosh. Pray for your children. Tfilah Rashash. I'm telling you guys, if you ever read these uh, Tfilah, you know what words are in here? You know how it gets you excited and enthusiastic to pray? If you just read the words over here, 
You start to get the feeling. You, it, it starts to cook you ready. You start to get to percolate for tefillah. And then after that, you have uh, you come to the Shem Yechud. Wow, I did it. Sometimes, I'll give you an example. For example, me, from 6.30 to 7.30, that's prime time in my house. Right? That's when the kids wake up and they have to get ready and have to put them in the car between 7.30. I don't have this Yeshuv Adad that we're talking about right now. I don't have this 15 minutes before. Well, I don't have this 10 minutes before to have to. So I'm teaching it, but I'm, I'm not doing it myself. So you know what I do? I wake up 5.30. You know I wake up 5.30? So I get my one hour before 6.30. I take up my kids, take care of them. I'm here. I'm already there. I didn't be quote the And if I know I'm going to be late, you know what I do? I do korbanot at home. Because I know I'm going to be late. So I don't want to come here and see be from behind. They're in uh, Ishtabach and I'm in Modani. How's that going to be? For sure, that my tefillah is going to pay for it. It's going to be bits and pieces, slices, slices. So what do you do? I know tomorrow I'm going to be extra time. Okay, be a man. Wake up early, do korbanot before in the house. Be a man. Wake up in the morning, set up your tefillah. Have a different mindset. You can't always be this patsua that's always, I'm tired, I'm late, my wife, my children. How many excuse passes are you going to use? You have to do the job right at one point. You can't always be having crutches. So, when it says that Hasidim would wait an hour before tefillah to prepare the mindset, what do we think? Ah, uh, the Hasidim of yesteryears. No, you're the Hasid. <laughs> you don't know what to do. Open up the, the Sidur. The rabbi put over there all those things. And I'm telling you, learning before tefillah, whether it's daf yomi, gemara, halacha, or even, do, or even the, the, the tefillot that are here in the Sidur before, it's a different tefillah. One hour, one hour before tefillah that you put for Torah learning, whether halacha, daf yomi, or even this, it's a different Tefillah all together. You feel the connection, you feel the power, and you have the ability to make a difference in your own life and other people's lives. It's worth it. Why would you pass on that every single day? The most important hour, two hours of the day, is how we start our morning in Tefillah. It says anybody who starts their day, starts their day without directly to Tefillah, Kilu Bana Bama. It's as if he did Abu Zara. Why? And it's very common. People wake up, the Samech Mem has the best trick in the world. What time is it? You pick up the phone. He, he lets you pick it up for the phone. There's the swipe, and from that swipe, swiper keeps swiping, right? What happens? You move on to over there. Just the email, just the text, just the WhatsApp, just the Chadashot, and there it is. You gave your entire firsts of the day, all the firsts of the day, all the reshit of the day you gave to everything else but Hashem. Who knows even if you said Modani before you picked up the phone. He says, that's what you do. Avodah Zara. That's more important. The email was more important than Hashem. The text was more important than Hashem. The, the news was more important than Hashem. The whole idea is to hold yourself in the morning and say, no! This phone, 9 o'clock is when I touch it first time. Because why? Because my first words have to go to God. My first tefillah goes to God because that's when Hashem says, now you're showing me it's important. And it's going to be a problem. There's going to, he's, the the side is going to talk in your mind. But no, the email, the million dollars, we're going to make it with this email. If you pick it up the email right now, you'll make a million dollars. Believe me, that email will be there at 9 o'clock and that million dollars will happen. The Yetzir, the, Hashem creates the opportunity for all that panasa to see if you can pass the test of checking the email in the morning. Believe me, if you woke up late at 9 o'clock, it'd be the same thing. Just think that you woke up late. That you're not up. You're, for your phone, you're not up until 9 o'clock. Why? I'm out. I'm, uh, I'm with Hashem the first two hours of my day. Furthermore, I'm going to go to, we just learned the Rambam, that everybody needs to pause a little bit before starting to pray. The rabbi said, we said, that the top of the line is the one hour. That's a basic halakha, it's not a khumra. It's not a khumra, it's a halakha, to pause a little bit before starting to pray. Or before you make some 
uh, you know, this is not a chumrah or only Talmidei Chachamim do it. This is every single person has to have a, a few moments of preparation for tefillah. You have to clear your head and thoughts before entering tefillah. So you have to create that time for it. As a matter of fact, Igeret uh, Ramban. People have a good uh, habit to uh, a good minhag to read it on Saudash Lishit on uh, on Shabbat. Uh, a lot of people have uh, a good habit or good minhag to read it one time at least a week. Because what does it say over there in Igeret Ramban? It says it gives a very good promise. It says what he say? The Ramban gives you a guarantee. Read this. Learn from this. Every day or at least once a week. And they ask for, a, for a, a request from the Shamaim and they will acquiesce. They will grant it to you. But Igeret Ramban is a, is, a, is a letter that he wrote to his son. In Igeret Ramban, he has a line over there that is very much connected to our learning tonight. It says over there, after giving him tons and tons and tons of good advice, another piece is, V'haser kol divrei ha'ola milibecha be'et ha'tefila. The Ramban tells his son, you know how you're going to be successful in this world? Remove all the worldly things from your heart and from your mind in the time of prayer. Prepare your heart. What are we talking about? Prepare. Same thing. He tells him, he's telling him what to pray. <laughs> how to pray. But he said, but before you pray, prepare yourself. Meaning if you don't want to take, uh, you know, sometimes you want to take advice. This is a, most people like to take fatherly advice. The Rabban, I'm sure, was a good, good father that gives good advice. We could take his advice as a father as well. Meaning, clear your thoughts, let them be pure. Think about what you say. This is a general rule, not only in tefillah, in general. You know, as a matter of fact, I saw over here abroad that a lot of people, before they start the biracha, they pause to think about what their supplication is going to be. Before barichenu, before they start. He says, Barichenu, I'm going to thank Hashem for the panasa that He gave me. I want to thank Hashem for the, for the deal that didn't go through. I want to thank Hashem. I, I want to pray for my friend to have parnasa. Meaning you're thinking, Barichenu, Hashem, and okay. Meaning they, then you start into it. You go to the next one. Uh, the next one is, after Barichenu, is Gualenu. Right? Rafaenu oh, Gualenu. I'm sorry, Rafaenu. Let's say, so you, let's say Rafaenu, you think about the person that needs refuah. Barichenu, before the person that needs beracha. You think before you start. You think before you start. That's what Rabban is telling his son over here. And that's the lesson we need to take for ourselves. Don't take tefillah lightly. Don't just jump into it. Have intention. Why? When you have intention, it works better. When you have kavanah, the tefillah works better. The Shla Kadosh. In Masechet Tamid says, Ketzal mechinim et alev. He says, how do you prepare the, the, the heart for tefillah? He says, Kodem sheyakum leitpalel. Before you get up to pray, Yeshev me'at batel v'domem. Sit down a little bit. Don't move. Just, just be there. Be in the moment. V'yasir achshev otav melibo, v'yatchil achshev begdulat mishama v'haya olam. He says, think about it. And just now, right now, right now, you're just sitting quiet. You have a moment. You got, just got out of bed. You're sitting over there. God. Think about Hashem. Meaning, uh, you know, the, the exercise that I do, I try to do like a uh, Google Earth. I imagine me in my house in Florida, in Miami. No, I'm sorry, in Miami, in Florida, in America. Then I go, planet Earth. Then I go, in the middle of the universe. And I go to the middle of the galaxy. And all that is like a grain of sand for Kadosh Baruch Hu. Meaning, look at the creator of the world. I'm his son. So I think about something so big. Compared to me, something so small. It helps me imagine, quote unquote, not Hashem or God, but the difference of who I'm talking to. 
ויחשוב בחסדיו אשר עשה לו, ויחשוב בטובות וחסדים שגמלו. You always have to think about all the good things, meaning be, be a positive thinker. What, is it, what did Hashem do for me? What did Hashem do for me? Are me? I'm alive. He gave me another day of life. I'm breathing. I have vision. I have hearing. I have my senses. I have a family. I have a community. I have a car with full gas. I have a fridge filled with food. He saved me from that bad, uh, bad partner. He saved me that one time from danger, almost dying. I'm trying to think about it. Yeah, you know, anybody who's lived life, Mem Bet Masaot, I'm sure. You have 42 journeys. Every journey, there's, a, there's definitely a story where Hashem saved you, or where Hashem was good to you, or Hashem was, took care of you. Start the day like that. That's, good. That's a good way to start connecting to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Mekam atzarot etzilohu. מחולאים רפאהו, ולא כגמול השיבו, כי האל גמלו טובה, והוא גמלו רעה. And then you start to think, you know what? Wow, Hashem is so great. He, all the healing, all the, all, the, all, all the kindness that He has with me. And what have I done back to Him? Most of the time when you think back, any, any person, if you think back, how much did I give back to Hashem? What have I done to give back to Hashem? How many acts of kindness have I done just to repay for the kindness that Hashem did to me? All the chesed that Hashem did to me. For all the chesed that Hashem did to me, can, I should at least do the exact same chesed for another human being. Just to be fitting, just to be even. Hashem, you did this to me, I'll do it for somebody else, right? <clears throat> even that, we, we, I, I doubt somebody can have that under their belt. By that, you're able to, you know, you, you, you're, you're not thinking about CNN. You're not thinking about, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the Memshala in Israel. You're not thinking about uh, Biden over here, or your email, or your business. So what happens? You start to think about big things. You start to think about God. And it puts you in the right mindset. Furthermore, page 175. It says in Yeshaya, V'haya terem ikreu, v'ani a'ene. En terem, ela l'shon achana. Hainu. כאשר עושים הכנה כראוי, ורק אחר כך יקראו, אז ואני אענה. הקדוש ברוך הוא שומע ועונה לתפילתנו. דעתהו פסוק, והיה טרם יקראו, ואני אענה. He says, learn it like this, והיא טרם, זאת ההכנה. יקראו, טרם is the הכנה. יקראו is the תפילה, the final result, ואני אענה. You have to have the preparation. It's like you have a magic formula. A plus B equals C. If you take away A, B and C don't equal. You're not going to get the same result. What's the translation? Of what? The you just said. Terem ikreu, before they even uh, uh, call out to me, I will answer them. Furthermore, we say a famous pasuk every single day. The Marabim says something beautiful about this pasuk in Tehidim. Tikon tefilati ketor tefanecha, Masat kapai minchat arev, right? We say that every day in mincha. He says, what's tikon tefilati? The word tikon, it comes from hachana, le'achin. Gam be'et she'eseh hachana ila tefila. He says, tikon tefilati, when I prepare my tefila, ze nechshav ketoret lefanecha. He says that the preparation of a tefila turns the status of the tefillah as if you brought it as a ketoret. We know that tefillah is like a korban, right? What's higher than a korban? Ketoret. How do you take your tefillah from a replacement of a korban to a higher, to ketoret? Do the preparation before. Preparation before tefillah turns the tefillah to ketoret, more than korban. Tikon tefillati ketoret lefanecha masal kapay mechatarit, tikon tefillati gam peshat shaseh achana el atefillah, yez anekshav ke ketoret lefanecha. חשיבותה של ההכנה היא כמו הקטרת קטורת על גבי המזבח. More than that, the Malbim says that. That a person that prepares his tefillah, it's like he's a, he brought קטורת על המזבח. The highest, highest uh, קורבן that's possible. The, 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 the קורבנות that we read before we do, the learning משניות we read. Yes. It's not, it's not considered as part of preparation. It's, uh, so, it's considered the work of the קורבנות of the day. If you put notice over there, it has the names of every single korban. The preparation that we're talking about 
is the mindset before tefillah. In Korbanot, tefillah started. You already, you know. It's part of Avodah. You, you, it's part of the Avodah. It's, it's, it's part of the world that you're in already. That world is not preparation. You have to prepare yourself before you enter that world. I want to put something else out there. Baruch Hashem, a lot of people are zoche to this, but in other bigger shuls, it's not so simple. But another reason to prepare yourself the night before to be on time or to be early to Minyan is to take advantage of being one of the first ten in uh, in Minyan. I'd like to take this uh, this section. I'd like to take this section of the lesson and dedicate it to our good friend Doron Ben Hanan. Bezat Hashem that you hear this and it gives you inspiration to be part of the first ten. Are you applying something? Dynamic! You ready? I'm letting you know. This is when I read it. Uh, when I read it, I'm telling you. Uh, there's going to be a race. There's going to be a race over here. There's going to be a race. There's going to be a race to shul tomorrow morning. It says in Masechet Brachot on the 47th page on the second side. Le'olam yashkim adam lebet hakneset kedesh sheiskev imaneim asara rishonim. He says a person should accustom himself to wake up in the morning and to be one of the first ten in shul. Shafilu mea ba'im acharav notlim lo sacha keneged kulam. A hundred people come after him, he gets the reward of all of them. Okay, one second, we'll get to that. Watch this. What's the benefit of first ten? Zochim elu anim nimi masayi shonim. Look at the look at the reward that she gets to be the first ten. Mitchaberi mashchina. He gets a connection to God's presence. Nikra tzadik ve'ahuv la kadosh baruch hu vuhu keviachol kashur mo ba'avotot shel ahava. He's considered tzadik, beloved by God, and he's tied to him in strong ropes of love. When you are making the effort to be the first ten, there's a bond of love between you and God. HaKadosh Baruch Hu mishta'ashe'a imo. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gets an enjoyment from him. Ne'esa shushvina demalka. He becomes a friend of the king. Machrizim alav began Eden sheba rishon vekol ha-tzadikim shishomim et ha-karuz mevarchim oto. He says, there's a voice in heaven, in Gan Eden, that comes and says, he came first. And all the tzaddikim over there hear this announcement, and they come in to bless this guy. They all come to bless the first guy that comes to shul. But we're talking about the first ten. Nechshav kemishin oten tzedakah baseter. He says it also counts when the guy comes first, like the big, 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 big biggest tzedakah, to the guy that gives tzedakah without, uh, anonymously, without knowing. Umasir charon afashem. He calms down the anger. He eliminates, he takes away the anger of God. The person can actually become a vessel for God's holy presence to reside on him. The, 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 his soul becomes sanctified, becomes pure. He gets counted and written in the heavens and he's considered a friend to the holy angels, to the seraphim. His tefillah goes all the way to the gates of God, gates of heaven. That first guy, he is like equivalent and cherished and dear to God, like the entire tzibur. Imagine you go to a place like Bnes Faradim, 500 people, there's one guy and he's the, he's the one gets all that. Continues to say. Hey, listen, let's get inspired. Let's get inspired. Let's know what's on the table. You know what they say when you go to the, when you go to the casino, they say, don't leave any money on the table. Or when you close a deal, they tell you, don't leave any money on the table. You come to shul, don't leave any money on the table. As soon as the morning wakes up, what do you do? There's a jackpot at 4601 Thomas. Let me go pick it up. 
You gotta pick up your jackpot at 4601 Thomas. <clears throat> another another Schagador of the first ten. The first ten now. Zochim Lidbarech Meakadosh Baruch Hu. Those first ten, they merit, they have a blessing from God. Scharam Shel Asara Ke'elef. Their reward is like a thousand. Talmudam Mitkayem Be'adam. They learn and they're able to perform it. Ochlim Aperot Ba'olam Azeh Va'keren Ke'emet Lo Lo'olam Aba. Hashem pays them here and there. Double payment. You have enemies? You have enemies? Be one of the first ten. They disappear. And it says something beautiful over here. If somebody has some sort of an oyev against him that is against his soul, like the Yetzara, or against his body, like a machala, come be part, part of the first ten. You can get healed over there. <coughs> Zochim, look at the first ten that come to Shul. <laughs> Zochim lesharet la kadosh baruchu ba olam haba. They get to serve Hashem in olam haba. Zochim le nun sharet bina. The highest level of wisdom, the fifteenth level of wisdom, they merit it. Va kadosh baruchu mazmin laim parnasata. Hashem says, you need parnasa. I'm going to take care of it. Tfilata mitkabelat ki ilu kivnut kol akavanot areuyot. And he says, in those first ten people. Even if they don't know how to be mekaven, to have the proper intention, Hashem includes in the tefillot every single kavanah possible. He plugs it in for them. Bishutam nigalin Israel, in the merit of those ten people that rush to shul to be to make sure the reason why I'm rushing to shul, not coming late, rushing to shul because I want to be the first ten. That attitude in the shemaim brings the geula. So all those people in the world that are part of the first ten, not because by chance or they like to be prompt or. It says 6 3 I'll be 6 3 There's some people, they're very good with time. No, 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 the Kavanah that says, no, you know what, I'm going to shul this time? To be the first 10. Or that guy that that tries to be the first one. <laughs> that attitude in the Shammai brings the Geula. And by the way, that also has a ripple, butterfly effect, ripple effect, that it makes a good uh, uh, influence in all the, uh, in all the worlds. This is what we said right now, is the first stand. What about the first one? This one gets to see the uh, God's holy presence, and Hashem fulfills all his, uh, all his requests. No sin comes to his hand. No sin comes to his hand. He gets to inherit 310 worlds and all his enemies fall before him. Let me ask you a question. With everything that we... Yeah, Shai Olamot. Shai Olamot, there's 310 worlds that the Tzadikim uh, earn for being a Tzadik. Let me ask you a question. If I told you tomorrow, tomorrow morning, on 46 in Sheridan, at 7... I'm not I'm sorry, I'm not 7.45. At 7.30, there's a bag of cash with $10,000 waiting for you. What would you do? Ishti, 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 handle it. There's 10,000 cash on the corner. 7 o'clock. La lady and gentlemen, five, five. I'm letting you know the that there's a billion dollar, a bag of a billion dollars over here on 4601 Thomas. Every day, three times a day. <laughs> it's worth it to wake up early, to be the first ten, and be the first one to be prepared to meet God. You know why? He pays good. Oh, Hashem, Hashem pays good. He pays handsomely. This world and the next. You know, Shulchan Aruch. Did you, you ever read the first halachan Shulchan Aruch? Wake up like a lion in the morning. Why? You know what? For, you know why you wake up like a lion? To serve Hashem. That when you wake up in the morning, it's still dark outside. That's the right way to do it. The first halachan shulchan aruch, how does a Jew wake up in the morning when it's dark outside? You wake up the morning. 
Don't let the morning wake you up. If it's the if if it's light and you're still rolling out of bed, you're not performing the first halacha in Shulchan Aruch. Really sounds like and by the way, for all of you that love sleep, we know that the sleep of the morning is the sweetest. Yeah. But I'm letting you know, it's just getting used to it. You go to sleep. You go to sleep one hour earlier. You get to wake up the same way, super fresh in the morning. But I'm letting you know, once you start to do that, once you want, you become part of that club that you wake up the morning, your life is different because you have clarity. You have the ability to learn before. You have the ability to do a chana before. Yeah. You have the ability to connect to Hashem before. It's the quiet before the storm. You wake up, it's you and Hashem. A Jew wakes up in the morning, it's him and Hashem. If you're waking up to a category 5 tornado in your house, the wife screaming, preparing the food, the kid is losing the shoe, we're running late, ah, you lost the beauty of being a Jew and waking up the right way according to Halakha. I want to share with you another beautiful limud over here. The, uh, the Rav Mikotsk says something beautiful about waking up on time, waking up immediately. He says in Sefer Bereshit, what does it say? Vayikatsi Yaakov Mishnato Vayoma. He says what? כשיהודי קם בבוקר, מיד הוא מתפלל או לומד. Why? ויקץ יעקב, משנתו, he just woke up from his sleep, ויאמר, right away, he started to pray. He says, but how does, but how does it work? How does it work the other side? It says, אבל אצל פרעה, כתיב, ויקץ פרעה, פרעה is also, he also woke up. ומיד, וישן ויחלום שנית. Meaning what? הוא הסתובב לצד השני וחזר לישון. What happens? <laughs> Paro, Paro, Yetzirah, what does he do when you wake up? You look, oh, it's 5.30, it's 5.45, it's 6, it's still dark. Another 15 minutes, another 10 oh, yeah. minutes. You know that. Yeah, it's, it's sweet, don't get me wrong. We all fall for it and maybe there's a time and place for it also. But in general, Yaakov, what is what Yaakov says? He woke up, he doesn't go back to sleep. What is he say about Abraham? What's what they, they wake up early. we Jews wake up early to do jo, uh, to do God's work. We don't go back to sleep. We don't let the morning wake us up. Abraham was vayashkem. Vayakov is vayikatz. Just uh, the, the, it, you know, this section of the learning was just about the the attitude a person needs to have about the morning. The next important preparation for tefillah in the morning is a clean body, okay? This is also, if you're coming to shul, you have to know that you have to have a clean body. What is a clean body? This is something that every single person should know. A person has to be very careful that his body is clean. What's clean? I mean, at the end of the day, of course, like showered and all that, but the clean that they're talking about mm -hmm. is is when the person goes to the bathroom that he has to wipe it up properly to the point that there's not any excrement left on the body because that excrement is ma'akev. So when they say she ate gufo naki, he has to be very very careful that when a person uh, goes to the bathroom that they clean themselves completely. This is a lot of chinuch and the children when they're younger, they sometimes they they wipe once they wipe twice and uh, the, there's a whole chocolate cake left over right <laughs> so what do you have to do you have to teach them that you can't do that why because it's not the right way for tefillah the tefillah is not answered you know but the kids are five six or seven it's part of the the chinuch that they have to go through because they have to do it on their own already but sometimes adults also they have to be very careful because why if a person doesn't wipe properly it affects the tefillah look what it says hamit palet saich dizayer shi gufanaki lechatchila Meaning, a person should be accustomed that he has to, when he, when, before he comes to pray, that he should go to the bathroom and empty out his bowels, right? So, we're, uh, you know, there's a lot of men over here. Men like to take their time in the morning or in the bathroom in general. So let me ask you a question. If you have to do this also, when are you waking up? You know, sometimes when, when somebody comes late to shul, you know what's a good excuse? 
he, he, he legit had to go to the bathroom. Because he knows he can't come to pray until he emptied out everything. And sometimes it happens. Why? Because the guy couldn't go to the bathroom until Mamash 737. So he's sitting there waiting. Because what? You can't pray unless you clean out your bowels. That's a good excuse to coming late. A gufloya naki. But if we're already saying that, you know, that we know that tefillah starts at 745, and we have the family, and we have the kids, and we have the achana, and the mindset, now we just added a clean body? Means what? Tonight, I have to plan tomorrow. I have to plan tomorrow. Meaning what? What did I eat tonight? When did I eat tonight? Do I have to prepare for it? You have to know your body. Not only have to know your body, you have to know if that's going to be an issue in the morning and you prepare for it. Because why? If you don't prepare for it properly, what suffers? Your tefillah suffers again. Notice, there's always one thing that get, that suffers from your lack of planning. What? Tefillah. Always tefillah gets hurt. What did the tefillah do to you? The tefillah just wants to help you. The tefillah just wants to connect you to Kadosh Baruch Hu. But meanwhile, all you do is cut it here, cut it there, a little bit less, a little bit less, and we give it the least port of import, least amount of importance. Where in reality, we have to say, no, 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 no. I'm not losing a minute from my tefillah. I'm not losing 30 seconds from my tefillah. I'm there from minute one, ready, prepared, showtime. Believe me, when you go to, uh, to these championship games that they worked all season to be part of the, you know, the, the Super Bowl or the final championship, you think one guy is over there going to say, ah, I went too late to sleep last night. Ah, wait, I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> They're there practicing their shots an hour and a half before. Why? It's the biggest moment of their life. The biggest moment of our lives is every tefillah. Because every tefillah, you have a chance to change your mazal. You have a chance, a, a chance to change your, your, your life, or somebody else's life, your, your family's life, your business, your health. You don't pass up on that. Continues to say, Which is 72 minutes. He says, but what happens if now a person prayed even though that he had to go to the bathroom? It says, if the person had to go in a way that he couldn't hold himself up to 72 minutes, meaning he can hold himself up to 72 minutes, meaning he does have to go to the bathroom, but it's not urgent. Up to 72 minutes, he can hold it in, quote unquote, right? He is bediavad. He, 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 the tefillah is okay. And he doesn't have to lachzor it parel. Aval, if shelo haya yachol, hare tefillato nechshev tefillat to'eva. He says, but if the person had to use the restroom and he couldn't hold himself in for 72 minutes, his tefillah is to'eva. His tefillah is rejected. V'chozer umit parel. He says, V'im hazman katsa, v'im yamtin it parel, ad shit pane, yavor zman tefillah o kiyat shema. He says, but if he is going to now use the, if he finds himself in a situation where he woke up late, the latest time for Shema is 9.30. Or latest time for Tefillah is 10 o'clock. And if he's going to go to the bathroom, he's going to miss Shema Bezmana. He's going to miss Tefillah Shema Bezmana. He says, he can do it as long as that he, that the situation that he's in, he can hold it in for 72 minutes. Otherwise, it's not allowed. If you have to go right away, you have to go. Continues to say, Kodam et fila tzaych lasir ki chov v'ni'o v'chol davar atordo melekaven. Another preparation for tefila. Before you start to pray, blow your nose. Get rid of your phlegm, because that's going to bother you from having kavana. <laughs> Meaning what? Before you come in, you know, first of all, I think it's just common courtesy for all the people that are in the, in the room, that they don't have to hear a... <laughs> some people that still feel like it's... You know, Masachet Bechot says that if somebody gets disgusted from that, the person will pay for that. It's considered like a sin, because you disgusted somebody with the way you're coughing up a lube, right? So it says that you have to prepare yourself. So go, blow your nose, <coughs> clean, clean a little bit of your throat. Because why? A, it's going to bother you. And if it's going to bother you, that every time you go, and you're like this, or with a tissue, or you're, <coughs> it's going to, then you're concentrating on that, and not on the kavana. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
above and beyond having a clean body, before every tefillah, one should wash their hands without berakha. Now this is something, this is a good one to, to, to add to your to avodat Hashem. It says in Shulchan Aruch, There's a pasu now. It's an Shulchan Aruch. First, I'll, I'll see from the from the book. There's a book called Yalezu Hasidim, and it says over there a pasuk in Tehilim, Erchatz Benikayon Kapai, that I have to clean. I have to ha- wash my hands clean. Mikan from this pasuk in Tehilim we learn. Shavit Palet Zech Nakot Yadav B'Mayim. The person before he prays, he has to clean his hands with water. Vim En Lo Mayim. What if he finds himself without water? Right, anything that he could use to uh, to clean, which is what you could use uh, clothing, you could use the wall, you could use a rock, something if you don't have water. Even though that they're not dirty, you could, you could say no. I have to wash my hands. They're clean. I just came out of the bathroom. I just washed my hands. I, I was in my house. I just showered. Before you come to tefillah, wash your hands. And this washing of the hands is actually a halakha in Shulchan Aruch. It's in Siman Tzadik Bet, Seif Dalet. Im, sheyesh, asher enam akpidim al kach. There's some people that are not particular on washing their hands before tefillah. Mechoser yeda, because they just don't know. Or meit sumat lev, or they're just ignoring it. Mikol makom, halo medubar ba'alakha, shalem l'kayma. It's a halakha to wash your hands before tefillah. Shulchan Aruch. That's another part of your nikayon. To having clean hands before tefillah. Now even though that we said that a person has to prepare himself being clean. And now we said clean your nose, clean your, uh, clear your throat, wash your hands. Continues to say. Shadam tzayich rachin gufo umalbusho letefillah. Just like we just said, oh, prepare your mind, prepare your thoughts. We just said that, the preparation for tefillah. All the, the chassidim, they took an hour to prepare their mind for it. It's over here, it says, wait, 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 don't forget to also prepare the body. Not just the thoughts in the mind. Prepare the body, prepare your clothes, that they're clean. That you have to... Uh, you have to prepare yourself for uh, for your conversation with Hashem. Here we see again that before you come to do this avodah, there's a hachana. There's a gemara that brings this as well. It says. In Masechet Brachot, on the 16th page on the first side. Somebody who wants to receive the yoke of heaven full. You, the, the proper way for uh, receiving the yoke of heaven. Netilat Yadayim. Tefilin. Kiyat Shema. Vemale Alav Akatuv. They bring this pasuk again. And it also continues to say there, Rabbi Pinchas, B'Shem Rabbi Yosha, Omer, Hamitpalel Bebet HaKneset, Kiilu Kriv Minchat Tehora, Shenemar, Kashem Rabbi Yosha, Omer, Hamitpalel Bebet HaKneset, Kiilu Kriv Minchat Tehora, So, here it is. Tomorrow morning, you're going to come over here. If you wash your hands, and you put on tefillin, and you do Shema Israel, and you pray in a, in, a, in a shul, it's as if you brought a korban on the Mizbeach, and it's as if you brought a minchat tehora. You understand what's happening over here? So when you come in and everything, why? You have so much, so much to cash in on. And this is, you know, again, we're not, this is not some Kiruv organization that is putting some things out there in order for people to get closer to tefillah. This is a Gemara, this is Masachet Brachot. 
there's a there's a highest source you can get to these types of guarantees. There's just a few more that I want to share with you before we move on, before we conclude. They're very, very necessary in order to complete this lesson of preparation for tefillah. Yerkut Yosef brings the halachot of eating and drinking before tefillah. It says... It's another thing that you have to know when you prepare for tefillah. You can't eat or drink before prayer. There's a pasuk that says, don't eat blood. But from there they learned, don't eat al adam. What's al adam? On top of the blood. Which is what? When a person wakes up, he's considered that he has no food in him. It's just blood. Chazah say, don't eat until you pray on your dam. What's your dam? Your blood, your life. HaKadosh Baruch Hu said that what happened, that Yavam, he ate before he prayed. So because of that, he took it, he says, Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, L'achar shenitga'a ze ba'achilav eshtiya, so says, You can drink water before you pray. He says, when a person drinks water, it's not connected to Gava. He says, you can also drink water, I'm sorry, coffee and tea with, uh, with sugar. So we see that you can do it before. However, there is a, a little bit of a distinction with milk. He says also it's okay if you drink with a little bit of milk. He says but if you drink a full glass of, uh, of milk, is, right, that's exactly. Milk is one of the few foods that satiates. Uh, so it counts almost like a meal because you can see like even the babies they're one of their meals just drinking milk so if you need some little bit of milk in your coffee even though that milk satiates and what counts like eating you're able to do it so we see that uh, that we have to be careful not to eat before we pray, but if you need to have a coffee or tea, it's okay, like we just learned it. Continues to say, We come every day and we say to everybody, Shalom, right? And you say hello to everybody. You can't say that, why? Shem Hashem is Shalom. Right? So you can't... Exactly. Meaning what? Instead of saying Shalom, which is also you're saying hello to somebody before you're speaking to God, you're speaking to somebody before you're speaking to God, and also to be particular, not to word, use the word Shalom, what's allowed? Bokertov. Right? Out of Nimus. So when you come into Shul, what can you do? You can say... You can say Bokem Tov, that's allowed. And you don't get into the trouble of using the word Shalom. This doesn't apply for days for Mincha and Arvit. Except for Shabbat. Shabbat also Tzafra Tava, you don't say Shabbat Shalom, because the problem again is the word Shalom. Shalom. Shabbat is also yeah. God's name. So what do you say? We said good morning. You're not allowed to do your business before yeah. Shachrit. Don't check your email. Don't check your text. Because when you do that first, you're giving that more importance of Hashem. So before Shachrit, I want to tell you, there was a story that Rabbi Mansur at one time said also uh, about this uh, very uh, well-to-do businessman. And uh, he would learn and he would have a, f a cell phone on his uh, on his belt, and he said, "I'm not picking up my phone 
till 11 o'clock when I'm done learning. One day, the phone didn't stop ringing. Didn't stop ringing. Ringing, 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 ringing. That even the teacher was telling him, because he was hurting the vibrating, he's like, maybe you should pick it up. It seems like maybe it's something important. He says, from experience, I know. The Yetzara, from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock in the morning, drives everybody crazy. They don't know what to do. They call me because I'm the boss to see if I can figure it out. They see that I don't pick up the phone. What do they do? They figure it out themselves. When I call them up at 11 o'clock, you know what they say? We took care of it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, Chris, I don't pick up. Don't worry, it's a test. That phone, that text that you feel, no, 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 Ishti, no, 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 the, the guy, the, the, my car. The, the, it's a test. Why? Hashem says, show me I'm more important than that. That's how you build a relationship. Lastly, <laughs> even though that we said you shouldn't take care of your business before praying, but obviously you can't tell your kids, uh, Hashem. Can't tell you what, <laughs> Hashem. Yeah, yeah. No, this is obviously it's it's uh, taking care of the children. It's and even if you have to honor your mother and your father, you do it because that's considered a mitzvah as well. And by the way, this all comes from the concept of bikurim. What's bikurim? That we give the first fruit to Kadosh Baruch Hu, right? Peter kol rechem. We give the first uh, born of a donkey or of a, of a shol to Kadosh Baruch Hu. What's modani? What's the first thing? You have to be very careful that you're modani. The Lubavitcher Rebbe said, that's like a korban tamid. That as soon as you open up your eyes, you sit on your bed, and what did you say? What'd you do? You gave your first words to God. Be careful. Your wife tells you, uh, and she's like, good morning. Uh, good morning. Ah, sweetie, good morning. You just gave her your first words. You, you miss your first words. You keep saying, you, Abba, Abba, I lost my shoe. You have to, you have to, you have to make sure you don't lose on giving the first to Kadosh Baruch Hu. So we said in Shachrit, no emails, no internet, no news, no work, no cell phones. Uh, last thing about cell phones. Cell phones. Cell phones. Says, Mishi Eshlo Machshir Telephone Nayad, Pelephone. Mishi Eshlo. Sarich Lechavoto, Kodem Shikanes, the Beta Knesset. You have to turn it off. Kedesh Eloi Tzalzel Behem Sad Fila, so it doesn't ring in the middle of the Fila, which still happens sometimes. Veigrom Lebitul Kavanat Amit Palelim, and you have to understand, it does ruin people's prayer. The Tefila, you lose it, especially the second one, because why? After the second or third so one, important. what happened? You're like, oh, no. Uh, that's it, you're out, you're, you're somewhere else. Or, when the guy uh, all of a sudden puts you Sarit Haddad as a ringtone, or, or some rap song on a ringtone, and you're like trying to, what, it takes you out. So he says, you're going to bother people. He says, he says, and don't put it on vibration. Why? Because then it's going to bother you. So he says, <laughs> so he says, uh, the Gabaim have to be very careful to make sure that people don't come in with an open uh, telephone. So listen, we understand it's very, very difficult. The phone, we're addicted to the phone. We need the phone. Something very important that you're waiting for. The phone call, the wife, the business. Blah, blah. Okay, but it, 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 it's, it's still not its proper place. Believe me, you know what happened? You know what I realized? I forgot my phone at home a couple of times in the morning. And I forgot that I forgot it. I didn't even pay attention. I came, I prayed. And when I finished praying, I was like, where's my phone? It was at home. I said, oh, you know what? Let me try it again. It's like a relief. Hmm. It was a relief. You know, I realized I didn't miss it. When it was with me, it's always, you know, it's winking at me. Check me. <laughs> Check me. <laughs> Check what's up. Come on. You, know, you want to know what happened three minutes ago. Come on. You know, but if, you, if, it's, if I just know that my phone is not available to me until 9 o'clock, it's not available until 9 o'clock. You know what? You start telling people that are important to you. I'm not going to pick up before 9, just so you know. So after 9, reach out to me. You know what? They'll honor it. They'll respect it. <laughs> we spoke about preparing for tefillah. Finally, I want to talk about what Maran said in Shulchan Aruch, that after tefillah, there's another hour. 
says, כתב מרן בשולחן הלוך, היא שש שעה אחת קודם שיקום להתפלל, כדי שיכוון ליבו למקום, ושעה אחת אחר התפילה, כדי שלא תהיה נראית עליו כמסוי שממהר לצאת ממנה. He says, so it doesn't look like you're running away from the tefillah, stay for another hour. ויש אומרים, עד שיעשה כאן, כן זמן מועט. He said, you know, you can't stay an hour, something, a little bit. ברוך השם, we do it over here. מנחם does the halachot, this counts for it, right? But if you could do more, you could do more. If you could do the halachot with Menachem, or if you could add Chog L'Israel, or if you could do Daf Yomi, or again, if you open up, if you open up this, uh, this, this book, at the end of the book, right after Shachrit, it has over there Igeret Rambanj that we just read today. It has the Yag Ikarim, the 13 principles of faith, the Eser Schirot, Bereshit Aman, Tikkun HaKlali, Tiflat Rebi Ishmael Kohen HaGadol. Oh my God, did you guys ever read it? Any of you ever read the Tefillah of Rabbi Ishmael Kohen Gadol? Unbelievable. If you want your heart to pump, if you had a good, good Tefillah, and you want to put like the final stamp on it, read that Tefillah. Look at the words over there. Look what it says over there. So some people have a good custom to read Tehillim before they go. An hour learning. You can do it. If you can do an hour learning, Baruch Hashem. Nah? Some people could do, they go from here straight to Kolel and they learn half a day. Meaning what? There's a preparation to tefillah. What we do before and what we do after. A good preparation, a good tip. Start at night. Start at night. What does tomorrow look like? What do I have to do? What's my responsibilities? What did I eat? What didn't I eat? What does it look like? How much time am I coming before? Am I coming exactly on time? 15 minutes before, half hour before. I hit, I'm bored by myself. Get a chavruta. Can you come early to shul with me? You want to do 20 minutes before tefillah, me and you, we learn to alachot. Before we start tefillah, you want to learn tehillim with mefarshim. You want to read the parashat shavua before tefillah. Find somebody, it's good, it's fun. You have a buddy system where you start the day and you come into tefillah with the limud, you come into tefillah with a hachana, it's completely different. You go into the tefillah, you feel connected. And we saw all the things that the tefillah promises. And look at that, and not only that, what about the incentive of being of the first 10? Or even to be the first one, you know, one, my friend in New York, the rabbi one time spoke about oh, the, the loftiness of somebody coming to shul <laughs> first. He was the first one in shul for years, my friend. He knew this. He made sure all the time to be there 20, 30 minutes before anybody and he would come, he would fix, put the sidurim, that was his half hour, like he liked it. The, 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 the week that the rabbi said this drasha about being the first one of the first ten, he comes, there's a guy there already. <laughs> he says, okay, you know, fine, no problem. Boker tov, you know, they're friends. The next day he says, you know what, I have to come early. I want to be first. I mean, nice ticket for me. The next day he comes in earlier. The following day, the other guy comes in earlier. <laughs> they find up. themselves they're coming here an hour before. Nobody's saying nothing to one another. They just want to get this one, the, 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 the one. אבל באפר ראשון הוא אמר, זה לא אמר משנה. לא, הראשון. הוא רוצה את הראשון. של כולם. לא, העשרה ראשון אחרון. לא, הוא אמר, לא, הראשון הוא אמר. העשירי גם כן יש לו משהו, סליחה. And they all do, all the first one have. But the first one, we said what the first one get. The first one gets more. You want to know something? He didn't beat him, my friend tapped out. He's like, well, I'm going to sleep in shul. The guy made it, he took over. He took over. He said he know, he understands what the first is. So not to forget the first in shul. And then we said after it, how how did it go to show Hashem that we're not running away? Baruch uh, Hashem, what are we learning here? What's the whole purpose of this class? To become better, a better Jew, a better mitpalel. So we showed some things that are so far from us. It seems right now that we can't do it. But we also learned some low-hanging fruit. Things that tomorrow, tomorrow I'm, I'm going to be one of the first ten. Tomorrow I'm going to be the first one. Tomorrow I'm coming 15 minutes early. Tomorrow I'm going to have Yeshua Dad. Tomorrow, Tehem. I'm going to Tehem. I'm going to pre prepare myself. Tehem ikreenu, bani ane. Akod haba. Haba. Hey, Bet Alef. Ketan ikhnas la olam haba. So what we have over here, we have over here an opportunity to understand what's the best level that we can be. You plug yourself in where you think you can participate now, 
And the more you become used to your Avodat Hashem, you know what happens after a while? You go up. And you add more, and you add more, and you add more. I know in Shabbat morning, there's a, a race over here. It's between me, Eli, and uh, Eliezer. What's his name? What's his Spanish name? Oh, Luis. Luis. Luis and Luis. Yeah. And you see, what time, what time you and you have no idea what it's like. I'm, I'm, I'm going to reveal something. Seven. Seven. Yeah. I'm going to reveal something. I was going to get in the beginning. Abraham? Abraham is here at 3.30 now. I'm letting you know. I'm letting you know. I dare you. I'm going to reveal something. I dare you to experience this. Shabbat. Before everybody comes, that you open the door, it's just you. You come to the parochet, you stick your head inside, he says, Hashem Elech, Hashem Alach, Hashem Loch Lolam Vaed, and VIP. He talked, I know, I know what this promise is. I want to take this special moment and pray for Ploni Ben Ploni. He needs a Zivu. Ploni Ben Ploni, he needs a Parnasa. You just, and you, you have the moment, you have the VIP. And three hours later, when the room is packed, you look around, it's a good feeling. Get it one time. Feel that thing. It'll give you a lot, a lot of cheshek to do it again, even on the day to day. It's good to get inspired about the fila. Good to get inspired to know what treasures are available to us every single day. Lo b'shamayim he.